Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. Welcome to this tutorial where we will be seeing how to change the hairstyle in your portrait shots using some AI tools and go from this to something like this. I have given this image. You can download this via the description. Also, just before we get started, so these are mainly going to be some of them are going to be web apps like you can see some tabs open here. So these three tools are not entirely free but you do get certain amount of credit so i'll be showing you how you can use them and they are pretty much straightforward you just input the picture and you select the hairstyle and you get what you want but in case you don't want to pay anything for it i've been showing this particular tool replace anything ai which is completely free can be used in conjunction with photoshop so when I say Photoshop, you can even go for something like photop.com, which is like a replica of Photoshop to do the same thing that I'm going to be showing you. So this last method is basically completely free. And also in between, I will be showing you how Photoshop's generative fill works for this. We've already got our selection of the hair. And I've deliberately chosen a slightly tough image in which the subject is not perfectly aligned. You can see the subject is slightly on the right. That's because a lot of these tools, when I was researching, they demand a perfect photo. And I don't want to include those tools. I want to show you tools where you upload any kind of picture and it does the job. So let's get started. The first one that I really liked after trying around 15 different AI tools was UCAM Online Editor very straightforward you all the links have been given in the description just go here choose your image so let's just open up our image right so the image has been uploaded here and what happens is when you create a free account there will be somewhere uh, after you upload your image you'll be getting a prompt to make an account you can uh, it's completely free so i'm already signed in as you can see here but you're gonna get five credits now when i was trying this i utilize the credits already and i'm just left with one credit so i can't really show you this live but i'm going to be showing you the results it just means the same thing uh, because every style change that you do will take away two credits and they don't replenish uh like that you'll have to just go for the paid plan so that's a downside but this worked in the in a very smooth way because all you had to do was upload your photo select for example in this case female select your hairstyle they didn't even restrict on the free plan which hairstyle you can choose. Okay, you can pretty much choose any of them. And then you just hit, after you've selected the hairstyle, you just hit generate. For me, it's disabled because I just have one credit left. This will require two, okay? This is probably the most straightforward and the one that gave me the best results. As you can see in front of you, I tried two or three variations and it looked really, really real and good. The only thing is, yes, the credits don't replenish. And if I show you the pricing here, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cheap. Like even if you were to use this, you know, for your clients or for something else, this is very cheap. But this worked very flawlessly. This was the favorite, okay? Apart from the fact that, yes, we don't get that many uh, credits. But let's move on to the next one, uh, which is myedit.online. Again, the link is in the description. Let's choose the file and upload it. Now here also it works in a very similar way that you do get a certain amount of credits when I was trying all this. So I utilized all those credits and here if I, what happens is once you upload your picture, what you just have to do is you can just select in this case, female is selected by default and then you can select the hairstyle that you want. For example, something like this. But again, you can see it's going to require two credits. I just have one after all the things that I did. But here are some screenshots which show you how this particular tool also works. Again, the problem is the credits don't replenish. But this tool also worked in a good way. And if you go to this AI tool section, they actually have a lot of different tools or AI tools for changing a lot of things in Portrait. So this can also be fine. Finally, we've got AI lab tools. The moment you go on this site, just upload the photo. So let's do that. I'm going to hit open image. And the image has been uploaded. And you can see here this time in this particular tool, you do get credits which come every day. So they replenish. So that's a good thing. They do have a lot of tools here on the left. We are interested. Uh, is this thing called Hairstyle Changer Pro? I'm sure this is better. But as you can see, this is paid. But there's also a free Hairstyle Changer. Uh, somewhere here see a hairstyle changer the only problem is you can only select these two options here so you can see the results already i tried it with the long hair doesn't look bad at all the only issue with this is you are going to get this with the watermark when you download it okay so these are you can consider them as the freemium options that you've got but after all my research these uh, three are the best okay 
And let's now look at something which is entirely free, but might just take a bit more work. But before that, let me also just show you, since we already have Photoshop open here, we've got a selection of the hair. Of course, generative fill can be used for this. It's just that I'm not uh, too happy with the results that it produces. For example, I've already made a selection just to save time. So if I was to go to generative fill, the contextual taskbar and just type in, let's say, long straight hair. I was, I tried a lot of different prompts. Uh, I wanted, for example, something which was really long and it was just not able to produce the change. It does change the hairstyle as you're going to see, but it doesn't really follow the prompt that you're giving. So that is the downside of this, but let's just wait for the results. All right, so you can see here, like I wrote long straight hair. There was a change, but then it's not exactly what I wanted, right? I tried a lot of different prompts, wavy hair, bangs and all these things. It just doesn't give you, changes the hairstyle. So right now I would say generative fill probably is not the best option, okay? Even though it, if you have the paid version of Photoshop, this is the fastest way to do it, okay? But finally, let's look at something which works well, but it might take a bit of effort, but it's completely, completely free. All right, so like I mentioned before, I have been showing a lot of videos on Replace Anything. You can just see the latest videos on my channel. Uh, to just see the absolute basics of this tool. But basically, like the name suggests, you can replace anything. So we are going to replace the hair. The moment you go on this website, the link is given in the description. You go to this part which says image create. And let's upload our image here. All right, so we've got our image. And as shown before, how this tool works is you the moment you get this cursor here, this is asking you to select something which is going to be retained. And then you're going to write the prompt, okay? So... If you've not seen my last video on this topic, okay, where I showed you how to change a jacket, for example, the problem, the link is hovering on top. You can see that later if you want, because that will make you understand this process in a much better way. But the problem with this is that the moment you click something, like if I, let's say, click on the hair, it's, it's going to select the hair well, but the problem is it's going to retain the hair. So if I just type in now, change the hair, you can see it selected it well, right? It's showing you the overlay. If I type in the prompt, let's say long wavy hair, it's not going to work because this is telling this tool that this has to be retained. Whereas what we need is opposite, right? We need to select everything else and not retain the hair and change it, right? So like I've shown in that particular video, the way out of this is because there's no way to inverse this selection in this tool as of now, okay? So how what you have to do is... Uh, you have to basically go in this more input parameters option and we have to upload a mask that we create. A mask is nothing but a selection, a black and white layer mask that you can create in Photoshop. And when I say Photoshop, you can actually create this. Uh, this particular function is available in the free replicas of Photoshop like photop.com also, whatever I'm going to show you right now, you can do it there also. So that's why this is a completely free process. And how it works is, uh, so since from the last demo, we've already got a selection. What you just basically do is we, once we make a selection of what we want in Photoshop, we just have to create a layer mask, okay? So I can just go on here, create a layer mask, hold down Alt Option and click on the layer mask so that we get a black and white version. That means we are seeing the layer mask itself. And this is what we are going to upload here because you can see that it allows us the option to upload a user-specified mask image where how it works is that anything that is white represents the selection. Anything that is black means that it is not to be retained. Uh, it's not to be selected, right? Again, we want to do the opposite, right? That's what we are not able to do in this particular tool because we don't want to retain the hair. So again, like I've showed in my last video, what you can do here is that you can just invert this. So we get, so you can double click on the layer mask. You'll get the properties window. Just hit invert and then you can do this. So you get now you can see that yes, the white part that means everything else in the image should be retained when we type our prompt, but the hair should be changed. So we've got that part. Now the only thing is we need to export this as an image. So how you do that is I can just select all by hitting control command A, open up a new document. It's going to because I selected everything is going to open up new open up a new document uh, with the same dimensions. So we do this. And now I can go back here, hit control command C, that is copy, and then control command V, that is paste, and then simply go here to file and export this particular image as a JPEG image, just like you do it normally for any other image in Photoshop. And once we've got this image, we're going to upload this and replace anything. I already have this ready, so let me do that. All right, so I'm going to go down here 
And under the mask option, I'm going to upload the image. All right, so I've just uploaded the image you can see here. So now we don't need to rely on the selection tools here. In fact, what I need to do is I will just need to upload this particular image again. So let me just because we have just made the selection there. I could also hit undo there to be frank, but um, so let me do this again. And now once this does get uploaded, I'm just going to make the selection by using the mask image. So now we are all set because it knows what we want to change and what we want to retain. And now if I type something like straight black hair, so let's just use that as a prompt. And you just hit run and let's wait for the results. It's not always perfect. That's why I said this is a longer process, but it's completely free. You never have to pay for this. So let's just wait for the results here. All right, so we've got our results and you can see, yes, it doesn't do a very perfect job, but if you compare what we wrote in the prompt, this is following the prompt much better than the generative fill AI feature in Photoshop because this definitely looks like straight hair. It's just messed up the ends, okay? So let's just check the four variations because this sometimes happens. For example, I would probably like, uh, I think this one looks really good. So what we do is we just download this. So let's download this. And I'm going to open this back up in Photoshop. If you have, if you're using again a free replica of Photoshop like Photo P, or maybe you're using a free software like GIMP, you can use the manual tools like Clone Stamp to correct this. But since this video is about AI and I do have the paid version of Photoshop, let me show you how quickly this can be corrected using Generative Fill. All right, so we've opened up that image that we've got. Only thing is we just need to correct these parts on the side. So Using generative fill, it's very easy because all I need to do is just make a selection of this, the bad parts, and I don't even have to type in a prompt. I can just hit generative fill, empty prompt, and generate. And that usually is going to fix up most of the things here. But I'm still, of course, it's still not ideal. The ideal thing would be to get it right within replace anything. But this is a tough transformation that we're going. You could, even the paid AI tools that I showed you, a lot of them crashed, a lot of them didn't work because this is probably something that puts a lot of uh, or needs a lot of computing power. But you can see that it fix up, fixed up the sides. If I was more careful when I made the selection and just restricted myself to the extremes, this would have been, this would have looked better. But this is the completely free way of doing things. So I am someone right now, I'm experimenting with a lot of different AI tools which can help photographers, which can help you edit your images. So if that is something that appeals to you, then don't forget to of course like this video and also subscribe to the channel so that you can keep in touch with all the different AI experiments that I am doing in the realm of photo editing. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.